All right, I think you're gonna need to get your bait right next to mine. <laughs> Bunch of dolphins right here now. Their family is spread out wide. You know, some guy might be over here doing a little exactly. hunting, this guy's hunting. But if you sit there for a little bit and feed the fish, everybody will eventually come to the boat. So it's a very important, because you never know when a big fish is gonna swim up. Right there, oh, that's the one. There we go, baby. Oh, look at him. It's like high school, baby, just like high school. That's why you come dolphin fishing in May. Simrads Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Scott Walker and Captain Steve Roger. Scotty, what you taking me fishing for today, buddy? Believe it or not, this is the first day it hasn't blown in 12 years. <laughs> we're gonna run around, catch some dolphins, and then when we're done with that, we're gonna go catch some big fat queens. I gotta make some fish cakes tonight. All right, well, I got a couple new rods, a couple new reels. And, Break them uh, in. I mean, the weather's great. We're just, we're wasting time here at the dock. I'm all about running when it's calm, buddy. The boat looks great, dude. Yeah, we've got the new raft on her I and see all that. this dry deck. It's feeling the sea deck. It feels good on your feet. Right, Let's go man. get some blood on it. We got the biggest pilchards you've ever seen in your life behind you there. I've seen them. I already looked at those. That's the first place I looked. <laughs> I, checked, I checked the lunch cooler and then I checked the live well. That's <laughs> what's good. important. So, Scott, middle of May, um, always been my favorite time for big dolphin. I used to tell people, you know, stay away from the full moon middle of May if you want to catch big dolphin. And um, we had an opportunity to get out. Which is rare for us. We, when we usually get together, it's not ideal season for whatever we're after. Yeah, not uh, only that, it's usually blowing 30. Yeah, and we always want to do a dolphin show, and we've had to struggle through some. We've had some good ones, but you know, we actually, this time, were able to have the boat ready, and it was prime time. Yeah. Man, there's a lot of bait in this. A lot of bait? Yeah, runners and small flyers. We were lucky enough, there was weed out there today. It wasn't just a big blue ocean. And you know, once you get going, you gotta, the day's gotta start. Is this weed line at 600 feet gonna be the one? Or is this the one you wanna let some of the other boats work and you just keep going a little further? And, you know, when do you make that decision? You know, you look up and down a weed line if you, if, with the binoculars or your radar, if you don't see something for one or two miles, even though it's a beautiful weed line, a yellow brick road, you gotta leave it and just keep looking for the better uh, scenario. And I think it was our, we went through three really nice ones before we found the one we wanted to turn on and really start taking advantage of what it might have to offer. All right, here we go. There's the first, there's a nice pack of gaffers right here, schoolies. Coming to you, coming to you, coming to you. Here they come. Keep it moving, cuz. All right, they're swimming up to us. Nice fishing mixed in. I'd fire one pilch out there, take it over. They're in, they're in our wash, it's awesome. They're swimming with us real pretty. There you go. Oh, oh, oh. came over. There's a taco. I'd say we take two, two or three of them and move on. Looking good there. You want a couple of them? Uh, yeah, let's get two. Still see them? Yep, they're following right behind the motors. There you go. Uh. Yeah, that's the one we're looking for. The bullhead. There's another school coming up to us there now. When we finally found the one and turned west, it uh, wasn't very long before we were actually hooked up and had our first school, took a few for dinner, and you know, we wanted to catch a big one. There was plenty of fish there, but 
We did our 30 minutes. We kept them around with live baits and chunks. The fish we wanted weren't there. We tried to pick a few of the bigger schoolies out, and it was time to move on to the next one. But we didn't have to go anywhere except for down the weed line another 500 yards, quarter mile, and start the process all over again. There we go. There's a little sandwich right there, buddy. Come on, buddy. That's the one we want. That's the one we want. Oh, yes. Way to go, Steve. Oh, oh yeah. That's the one, baby. <laughs> That's awesome. Simrad's Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Simrad. Go with confidence. Bubba, the ultimate lifestyle. Sea Deck, your boat deserves Sea Deck. Waypoint TV, streaming the best hunting and fishing series. Download the app today. By Yamaha, reliability starts here. And by Ameritrail Trailers, Hawks K Resort, and Power Pro. I always tell everybody it's so important to spend 30 minutes on every school because those fish are so uh, aware of what's going on that their their family is spread out wide. You know, some guy might be over here doing a little exactly. hunting, this guy's hunting, but if you sit there for a little bit and feed the fish, everybody will eventually come to the boat. So it's a very important, because you never know when a big fish is gonna swim up. All right, I think you're gonna need to get your bait right next to mine. <laughs> Bunch of dolphins right here now. Oh boy, what a beautiful sight. What you got, buddy? Pretty water, mahi mahi's everywhere. Tough getting a big one out from all the little ones. One, two, three. In the boat. These dolphins, uh, they, they grow so fast, right? So he's, he, he, everybody's heard this story a million times, but it's supposed to be 20 pounds in one year or bigger, and they're eating everything, and, and including their own offspring and their Oh yeah, there's plenty same. of dolphin inside of a dolphin. Yes, and so the, when you see the group of smaller fish tighten up, you know that there's some type of predator around, and we did get a shot at a really nice uh, big dolphin. It's hard sometimes because the little fish are so aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's that another. You to it. So yeah. it's very, very uh, important that you try to keep your eye on him the whole time and, and try to find him and, and get a bait in front of him because nine times out of 10, he'll eat it. It's right there behind you. Okay, I'm holding it. There he is, he's right there, a big fish. Ready? Right there. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Come on, buddy. That's the one we want, that's the one we want. Oh, yes! Way to go, Steve. That was a freaking stallion. That stallic. was a right. Make sure everything's... You got them on the big stuff. Yeah, what a fish. Coming in. Oh! Yeah. That's the one, baby. <laughs> that's awesome. There we go, baby. Oh, look at him. Like high school, baby, just like high school. That's why you come dolphin fishing in May. Right there. Yeah, buddy. Freaking stallion. Yeah. Gonna actually get to use the gaff today, Scott Walker. All right, live bait. Oh! That's a good fish, man. I grabbed the rod with no hook on it. I'm like, <laughs> what? The only one I cut off the whole day. Yeah. What a fish, bud. Gonna have to get your picture taken with that one. That I promise. Gonna jump. In the jump. Into the weeds. Oh, on the other side of the weeds. Keep backing me up. Isn't that amazing how they always go in the weed line? That's where they started life. That's where they wanted. So he's way over there. I know. I'm, I'm hung up over here. We got to be careful. He's doing everything in his power to stay in the ocean and out of the box. Oh, that's yeah. sick, bro. Oh, yeah. Jump again. <laughs> oh, yeah. scared to do anything. Look at with all this grass. Right, we get that weed, we got him. Holy crap, we got some grass. Keep the drag light, we'll get it. It's always something, Stevie boy. It's always something. You're looking for shrimp? <laughs> Hundred yards of this. Yeah, that's why I love that braid, because <laughs> yeah, if you're we... doing this with mono, you'd be scared to death. Let him run if he wants to run. You're almost there, bud. There, baby. All right. 
Go get him. I think that's the school teacher, and that was all his classmates. He's gonna jump again. Nice work. Found that fish. Don't don't hold back on him. That's when you snap him off. Man, this freaking <laughs> rod is awesome. Keep it clean, bro. We gotta get me a nice little picture. I'll keep it clean. I'll get my camera out for this one. Not, not often when me and you are fishing together, we pull our cameras out. This is the one. That is awesome, bro. That's a wow. nice fish, man. He's 40 way pounds. To, way oh. to see him amongst all the rest of them, you know? Yeah, he's 40 all day. Might be 50. Get him good. We nice. own him. <laughs> it's so difficult with those smaller fish around to actually get the bait to the big fish because they're a little bit quicker, a little bit faster. They want to be that big. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they got to win the race. Yeah. So, um, you, know, I, I, you know, I made numerous casts to try to, to get him in one time. I saw him kind of veer off from the school and I was able to place a cast in there. And I think a small one came in there and actually grabbed it. But he was, you know, trying to get it down. And I think, you know, sometimes they spit it to reposition, like to exactly. turn it, you know? And he spit that thing out, and that big bull just came in there and, and slammed it. <laughs> um, Good stuff. Oh. Good stuff. All right. That's how you get bloody. That's how you get some tacos right there, buddy. <laughs> Got to take our lunch out of here and make room for him. Bury him. You ready? Yeah. Woo! Nice. Want to see more Into the Blue? Well, head on over to Waypoint TV. You can watch the last 12 seasons, get exclusive content, educational videos to make you a better fisherman. You can either download the app or go to waypointtv.com. That fish every bit of 40. I love it. It's hard to line it all up, you know. Sometimes the fishing's unbelievable. You know, it, it's, it's sometimes it's blowing 30 and it's not all right. So it's, it, it's really nice to have it all come together. That's what I'm talking about. A little more dinner, go with that big boy. I'm not sure there's not another big boy here just yet. Oh, the big boy that's in the box, baby. <laughs> Trying to forget about my trophy, ain't you? Oh, no. I always love about um, the dolphin fishing is how good eating they are. And, and, and not just that, it's how well they hold in a freezer. Because there's not many fish that, to me, can actually, uh, don't, don't deteriorate flavor-wise when you freeze them. They don't get fishy. The, the dolphin, the mahi-mahi, is one of the few fish that I have no problem freezing and, um, and stocking up on when I travel or to take it to friends and family that don't live in the Keys. Yeah! Good work, good work, good work. Any way you want. The dolphin's a perfect fish. You're gonna fry it. You're gonna make tacos with it. You're gonna grill it, bake it, roast it. I mean, blacken. Every way, every salad. way. You want to eat heavy. You want to eat light. Everyone loves it. Give me three more bowls like that, and I'll let you go home. You're driving, dude. I'm just catching. All right. And that's why it's the most sought after fish in the Keys, I believe. And that and what else? Maybe a yellowtail snapper. That, t that tuna fish right there ain't too bad either <laughs> over here at Angler and Ale. All right. There he is right there, Scott. Where? Right next to the patch, see him? Oh, I see him. Yeah, two fish, two fish. Oh, there's some quality fish here. Oh, come on. That's a good one. It's one other one that size in there. Yeah, there you go. They're right behind the boat now. There's four real nice ones there. That's really what we're after here. Come on. Yeah, that's a money shot, money shot. Oh, he's on it. Didn't mean to make you work this hard today, bud. Dolphin season's been a little slow to get here, you know? I always told people middle of May, you know? Yeah. Over the rail and into the pail, Steve. There you go. Two <laughs> points. <laughs> that was from outside the line. I'll give you three. So we're super excited about some of the new products from Scales. 
Um, this one especially, this is the one, one of my favorite. Uh, it's the First Mate shorts. Got a lot of different styles, a lot of different colors. These are actually a pair of them here. Um, you can wear them from just regular day use or even fishing. And what I like the most about them is they have this band here, which is padded and cushioned. It's not around the back, it's not around the sides, it's just in the front, on this front section here of about eight inches. And what's great about it is, is you don't always want to put a fighting belt on. You don't always have a fighting belt available. Um, and, and sometimes the fight doesn't last that long or, you know, these make it really easy to take the rod, set it into your gut and not have a bruise and not have a, you know, a, a pain area. Um, this, this design is really cool for just uh, taking that pressure off of your skin and your hip and your body and actually sticking that rod right in there and it'll really protect you for a long day and a long fight. The other thing I want to tell you guys about is the new Pro Performance shirts. Uh, I like the long sleeves like the one I have on right now keep the sun off of you. Uh, you know, we're indoors today, no big deal, but also the hood. I'm very, very into the hood, right? Keep the sun off the back of your neck, keep it off your ears. Uh, you're out there on the boat all day, man. These hoods are really nice. You take this with a ball cap and a, you know, a buff, uh, you're not gonna get all beat up by the sun. Um, the Pro Performance is made from 100% recyclable water bottles. Uh, it's SPF 50, it's breathable, uh, great product. The best thing about it is back in the day when we used to wear cotton t-shirts, you know, one tuna fish one to you know one mahi mahi and the shirt was ruined you know blood sprays i'm talking about a big pile of blood just that shake of the head is going to send a little splatter and it's going to ruin the shirt uh, this stuff is really amazing it's stain resistant um, as you can see i'm going to dump this product on here and it just it doesn't absorb in to the shirt right so uh it just rolls around it doesn't it doesn't uh whoo, watch out and you know that's the same thing that's going to happen with the blood Right, so uh, you get out there and, and you can slay the fish and just take the wash down, hose everything right off. Um, really cool product. I mean, this stuff is still not absorbed into the shirt, right? So you just take it and uh, pretty cool, man. Pretty cool product. Yeah, so something definitely check out. The First Mates and the new Pro Performance and uh, really liking the one with the hood. Simrad's Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Scales, every degree of water. Yeti, built for the wild. West Marine, for your life on the water. And by Shimano. Costa Pro Series. Nikon. And by SpearOneKeyWest.com. Into the Blue is on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Give us a follow or subscribe and check out behind the scenes footage and wonderful photography posted daily. Our schoolie rods are generally 30 or 40 pounds. You want something lighter because you use some smaller baits and it's just more fun. But then when that 40 to 50, 60 pounder if you show up in the Keys, you want 60, 80, or 100 pound liter, whatever you're comfortable with. Well, whatever you can get them to eat. Right. You know, sometimes they're a little shy on that very stuff, but just you go. Start with the big one. Yeah, and then the if it's a fish of lifetime, you gotta make rash decisions. Try the small stuff and just let's go for it. But day in, day out, just having that one rod ready, it makes for a perfect day and for us. Oh, there's a nice one. Just ate you. Come on. Come on, Stevie boy. Two more for dinner. Take you home. Yeah, man. This is the last school. I think we're about out of here, right? Yep. Only a few baits left. Yeah, it might be later in the day and you think all the fish are caught. That's not true. These fish are down deep. Later in the day, they, they might start coming back up. Come back up. The pressure during the day, the sun, they've been, they, they eat a lot. They have to eat, but they will go down to get away from pressure of the sun and pressure of outboard motors on top of them. Yeah. If you got that zone, it might not still be in 725 feet, but using your chart plotter, yeah, you can see that where you hour are. you're on it in the morning, you're going to know which way it's drifting, yeah. and you can extrapolate five hours and almost every time find it again, and then take advantage of when they 
quiet down out there with the boats and catch a few more real quality fish for the end of the day. And a lot of that stuff moves inshore, right? So if it was in 700, don't be surprised if three hours later it's in 600. It's just the way it works out there. I'm gonna let you catch a couple, Cap. I'm ready. I know you've been feeling left out all day. You know, we're really lucky to find the zone, like, which would be the weed line that's got the weed and the bait and the birds. We got our big fish and we found school after school oh, yeah. after school of cookie cutter 20 inches and we weren't finding any big ones. So, still early in the day, we did pick up one more time and go a little deeper. Didn't find any more weed lines. Ended up having to come back to where we were because that was the zone for the day. Yeah. But we had, had to, I had to scratch the itch and just to see the next one out was holding a better class of fish. But then instead of being stubborn, we rolled right back in and finished up and we ended up finding another big one that we couldn't get to. I kind of ran it over and couldn't find it again. Uh, I find it the longer you go without seeing one, the faster you start to go. And you know, it's a bad habit. Sometimes it pays off, you stop quick enough, but it did that particular time I didn't. I was going too fast and we couldn't get him on him. But, but coming back to the zone was what it took to keep finding fish all day long. All right, Scotty, I think that's it. Letting this one go. Good that's luck. the deal right there, buddy. I think that's a wrap. That one to be a 40 pounder in, by the end of the season. Got a 40 pounder in the box. Let the next one go. Got one left right here. All right, bring them on up, sling them on in. All right, box is open. Our day started off early, the action was crazy, the big fish showed up, and I'm telling you, just to be a part of that with our cameraman on board is amazing. Scotty, thank you, buddy. That was a great day of mahi fishing, Bubba. Such season's just started. That's the first 40 pounder. Time, to, I can put it on the radio. Dolphin season began today. You say I'm a trend starter? Yeah, everybody's been waiting for that. The word of the big boy. <laughs>